Imagine what we could learn if we followed the lives of thousands of people for the entire duration of their lifetime. Imagine what we might learn about how human beings age. Imagine what we might learn about how our circumstances and choices when young affect our health and the way we age later on in life. Now imagine that we've already been doing this for 65 years. During the Second World War, grave concerns about poverty, ill health and the falling birth rate prompted a national maternity survey. Led by Dr. James Douglas, the research was to identify the cost and quality of maternity care and how it could be approved after the war had ended. Health visitors interviewed nearly 14,000 mothers who had all given birth in the same week of March 1946. The findings showed such a large variation in the quality of care, as well as the health and survival of the babies, that funding was found to continue the research. This ongoing research became known as the National Survey of Health and Development. So the National Survey has been funded by the Medical Research Council since 1962 uh, and it's inspired um, similar comparable studies in the UK and across, um, across the world. And the research fund has recognised the value of such studies um, for revealing the health and the social processes, the biological processes that impact on health and well-being and how these can be translated to make interventions to improve policy and practice. Just under 5,500 of the children have been followed up regularly ever since. As scientists, we're really privileged that so many of the study members remain active participants. They have repeatedly given up their time to answer questions about their health and life circumstances and to be uh, measured and tested. What I do remember is primary school, probably five, six onwards, where pretty regularly we would dragged out or I was dragged out of a classroom to be physically examined or to be given some kind of uh, intelligence test of ticking strange boxes and following squiggles around and it made me feel you know a bit special a bit different. My earliest memory which I think was at the age of six was being in an extremely cold clinic uh, with very little clothing on me I, my liberty bodice is all I remember uh, standing on a very cold piece of lino I think I felt that I was doing something important, but I didn't quite know what, so I should have asked really. As I got older, I was braver and did ask. The early years of the survey focused on how the children's home and school environment shaped their educational achievement and development. As the children became adults, the emphasis naturally shifted to the changes in health as we age. We used to think of health as something uh, which was the absence of illness. So what we looked for was any signs of illness in, function, uh, in uh, eyes and ears and uh, spines and growth and so on. Uh, now we think of health as how you actually function. So we're not looking for illness, we're looking across the whole population and saying who is uh, beginning to have problems with breathing. And we started to do this when people were in their 30s because that's before most change with age takes place. And we decided it was best to do that with blood pressure, uh, later with uh, muscle strength as, uh, and so on. And in addition, we then have brought in memory as a, another vital uh, part of change with age in, in middle life. Survey members continue to have regular checkups. These include a series of tests that monitor health aspects such as blood pressure, heart and lung function, bone density, body size and shape, and mental capability. So now I've moved on to a different view where you can see all four chambers of the heart. So that's the left side, that's the right side, and um, that's the top of the heart, and that's the bottom of the heart. Again, just putting some colour across the valve to see if there's any narrowing or any leakage. And then across the other valve, so that's the mitral valve and that's the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart. And I'll just measure the blood flow across 
the heart just to see if there's any problem there. The tests are supported by a wide range of questions about the survey member's life and health choices. You're given a whole raft of tests in the course of a morning. Testing um, heart, lung function, um, cholesterol levels, blood pressure. Um, standing on one leg with your eyes shut. But what they did discover was that I'd got osteoporosis in my spine, which was very useful to know doctor was told I'm now on medication. I was very grateful to get the outcome, to get such a detailed outcome. It's in, on the one hand extremely reassuring and on the other flagged up just this need to be cautious about cholesterol um, and something that I necessarily wouldn't necessarily have looked at before. So and still that feeling of uh, doing something valuable to uh, contribute to a, a very important piece of research, the findings of which may well help lots of people in the future. The National Survey for Health and Development has been a unique opportunity to examine how human ageing is affected by many different biological and social factors. And the remarkable wealth of findings has made a major contribution to healthcare, education and social policy for more than 50 years. Of greatest interest has been linking early circumstances and choices of young people to their health later on in life. In many ways, the Britain in which survey members came of age is, is more optimistic and, and more prosperous than the one in which they grew up. But the kind of health inequalities that we saw as they were growing up as children still very much in place as adults. One of the things the studies also shows is that many aspects of health in midlife are linked back to factors in early life. So what we can do is lay out these findings fairly and carefully so that people as they grow older can choose what messages to pay attention to and what to ignore. And we also very much want to encourage younger people to take action before health problems arise. With the Douglas children now in their 60s, the National Survey of Health and Development has entered perhaps its most crucial stage. So this is a very exciting time for the study. We've just completed the detailed health assessments and over 80% of the study members uh, were able to participate and this is a wonderful achievement. So the new data will be used to show just how healthy the first of the baby boomers generation are as they reach retirement. And this uh, information is crucial to those who are delivering the health and social services in our ageing society. So as we follow the study members as they get older, we're going to be able to use these new data also to see if they predict future health and well-being, uh, uh, using that along with the existing data we already have about their lives. So it remains for me to wish the study members a very happy 65th birthday. Uh, we thank them for their contribution to medical research and uh, for their lifelong commitment to the National Survey. And it is this above all else that has allowed the study to flourish. I don't think at any point I ever thought of dropping out. It never occurred to me. I felt that it was, again, of value to others. I was giving something that was valuable, but also it was of great value to me too.